Hello, bye, my people. Now, welcome to this channel where we give the Ogbonge update as Prime Minister talks to breaking the Nigerian terrorists at HQ Nigerian Air Force shooting Biafran force from the air. And the, of course, the Biafran force repelled them. Make now hear this update from Prime Minister. Thank you very much for giving uh, that particular exact date when uh, the killing of our IPOB members started. You know, uh, a lot of people have fallen, of course, very few, not even a lot, because uh, Biafran's if we have over 45 million votes, I don't know who else is against us except those cockroaches in the media. So many of them have forgotten that the killings of uh, IPOB started in 2015 and nobody was held responsible for the first killing, second killing, up to the killing in 2021 before and after Mazin Amerikano was kidnapped from Kenya. Iko saw who was the commander of ESL, was killed like a chicken in his house because of the sabotage of the people who are today calling someone up names in IPOB, in a defunct IPOB. And who killed Ikonsa? Was it not the same Nigeria terrorist army? Was it someone up the commander of ESN then? The answer is no. Today, the Biafra Liberation Army under my watch is dealing with them. Dealing with Abrakwa and Koberia. If you want to know how the Biafra Liberation Army is neutralizing these terrorists, go to some of the states in Biafra land and witness and see things for yourself. Musa and, and his uh, accomplices are crying all over social media. You think it is just a, a mere shouting? No. Only them know what is going on. And we are not backing down. They will all be re neutralized in our land and like i said the biafra republic government in exile and the biafra de facto government in homeland will continue to support israel we will continue to be on the side of israel as israel continues to defend itself that is a lifetime alliance and nobody will take that away from us thank you thank you pm thank you sir uh, Mazi Sonny, I don't know if you, your, your, your mic is active. Are you active, Mazi Sonny? Minister of Information, are you active? Uh, please, um, PM, if Sonny is not active, maybe we'll consider bringing up, um, okay, um, what's the, my sources have disappeared anyway. Okay, let me give you the microphone very quickly. Uh, Chuku Meze, Chuku Meze, grab the microphone, uh, just uh, 60 seconds, please. Yeah, thank you, um, my Deputy Communication Minister. Um, greetings, my Honorable Prime Minister. Um, thank you for all you do for us. Greetings to Biafra, friends. Greetings to the friends and haters of, of Biafra. Well, um, before I go to my submission, I just want to say, um, I just want to give a big regards and thanks to our PM because I don't understand how you do this, but I know it's not easy most especially how you continue to stand as that shield between us and the enemy to prevent them from attacking the people of Biafra and also how you continue to organize. You understand? Organization as a leader is not an easy task. Even in one of our leader broadcasts, he said he doesn't even understand how the president of different nations are able to go to bed at night and sleep without having to worry about their people. And I know that's the shoe you're wearing right now. And I know it's not easy. So I want you to know that we be our friends from the depth of our hearts. We really appreciate and thank you for what you're doing for us. So my question goes like this. I want to know, um, why is it that, just as you said earlier, you said you had a, a meeting one of the one of a high um, ranking official who's part of the decision making, yes, I think in the United States. I want to ask, why is such a person like that with such caliber of position who knows what freedom really is all about and they have the power yes, huh, to make what is going on in nigeria stop if they really want to why would that same person be stressing on the fact that it's not going to be an easy journey is it that they know what is right and they don't want to do it i would just like you if you can stress on that so that we be our friends can understand and what we are facing and the need for us to be more resilient and never to give up until we get to Biafra. Thank you. Uh, 
Yeah, thank you very much for that question. I think uh, it is all about the political correctness, uh, you know, in politics. They know what is right, they don't want to do it. First, we've made them understand that what we are fighting today is not just about Biafra alone. It's about the future of Europe, the future of America. The terrorists are looking at making Nigeria and Sahel a safe haven. Once that safe haven is gotten, they are going to start launching attack against Europe and against America. Biafra is going to be a stumbling block to make sure that the upsurge of terrorists in the future will be checkmated and possibly quenched. So anybody who is thinking that what we are fighting for today as a Biafra or to get independence of Biafra is just for us alone, the person is making a big mistake. So what we do now is to educate the people in the United States Congress, to let them understand the danger that is ahead, or to let them understand the reason they must support Biafra. It is not for our own good alone. And this issue of they are looking for safe heaven is not coming from us. It's coming from the American Intelligence Agency and those who have served in the Sahel, in the Sahel region, the American uh, soldiers and all that. One of the general has said that they have seen that only in this region that the terrorists were able to work together. And what they are looking for is to get a safe haven, tap on the natural resources, begin to launch attack against America. It is the, the this uh, particular uh, video are there in the public. So we are fighting to make sure that America understand that it is going to have only good alliance in Africa. Only good, what the only alliance that America is going to have that is not infiltrated by terrorists or Islamic fundamentalism, that country is only Biafra and Ambazonia. That is the education, the awareness we are creating at the Congress at this moment. We want to let them understand that every alliance of America in Africa has been infiltrated by terrorists and those who are pro-Islamic fundamentalism. And they should understand it is time for America to make a different decision like they have done in the, like they have never done in the past. We have seen the interference and, and support of America in Libya. It failed. Because the rebel that was supported in Libya to kill Gaddafi, they are all Islamic fundamentalism. They are terrorists. We have seen American interference in Syria. What happened? They created the ISIS that is today has become a menace in the world. We have seen American interference in Iraq. We have seen American interference in uh, Afghanistan that gave birth to Taliban. So America has never supported any country that has 90% Christians and have the same ideology, the same mentality, the same civilization, and embrace the Western lifestyle, only Biafra. And we are saying to them, it is time you do a different thing. And that different thing is support Biafra to have a true allies in Africa. That, that can make it possible to make sure you start against the upsurge of terrorists from Sahel. And the only possibility for America to to make this impact is through this neutral state, imaginary state in Africa, Ambazonia and Biafra. And because we have alliance with Ambazonia, so whenever we are creating this awareness, I have to let them understand the importance of our alliance and why we are in alliance with Ambazonia. So even when Ambazonia is not there, we speak for them. That is the essence of alliance. So my brother, it is all about political correctness, but now we are taking the crusade to the decision makers. And that's exactly what we are doing by having a meeting with them to lecture them and make them understand what is going on and think differently to make a different decision. And everything I've said here about supporting those in Libya, those in, in, in Syria, those in Iraq, Afghanistan, they are all fact. It is not, I'm not making it up. So we have not seen America supporting any Christian rebel anywhere in the world. If they call us rebel, we accept. If they call us separatists, we accept. So we have not seen America supporting any Christian separatists in the world. Please, if there is any place where America has supported separatists that are Christian, please let me know. But time 
it is time for them to do that so they will have a true alliance in africa where we can stay and quench all the upsurge of terrorists from africa from sahel and beyond biafra is capable of doing that thank you thank you please can i ask just one more question please go ahead um so um i know in biafra we don't have no permanent friend and no permanent enemy all we have is the interest of biafra you can choose not to answer but i want to know um despite the change in um the democrat um um candidate for their presidency and i know that sometime last year during the um the campaign community of donald trump he recognized you as the prime minister of the biafra republic government in exile so do we continue to stand on that part of supporting donald trump because to me it seems like he's the one that will do something right our arms are wide open we are going to work with anybody who emerge as the american president who wishes to support biafra thank you thank you thank you sir thank you pm Please, Mazi success. You might have to continue to let me, I will be helping you to bring in people. Please, Mazi success, continue to add, uh, grant the mic to the people that are coming in, please. Mazi success, are you there? I don't know if Mazi success heard me. As a success, if you heard me, I can't hear you. Please just continue to admit uh, the people in. Thank you. We are not hearing anything from uh, PM. Can anyone have heard my voice? Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you so much, PM. Who can hear the deputy uh, minister again? Okay, I can hear you. What success uh, fell off? The network didn't allow him. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you so much, uh, PM. Uh, you are doing absolutely wonderful. Uh, we see the zoo when they are coming, but we don't see them when they are going. You know that shows that our 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 men on ground they are doing wonderful. Uh, PM, uh, my question to you uh, this afternoon is: uh, like this, uh, moronic uh, governors, uh, a few of them that uh, call themselves demagogue, is it not a high time for we to take them to heck? Bia, uh, Biafra uh, uh, Republic government in to take them to Hague. What, what is your take on it? Well, we are focusing on something different. So we are focusing on something different, and uh, uh, I believe uh, uh, at the right time, if we have that time, we we'll do that. But now we focus on something different. We have we have devised a means to fight this these monsters amongst us and those who call themselves governors and all that and so we are still eating and doing press up everybody should exercise pressure we know what we are doing okay a, a sec, 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 second uh, issue the warning you give to zoo uh, uh two days ago uh, in that warning, it's a little bit partially like you shielded people be that on behalf of Biafra. I did not shield Peter B. Peter B within us is our enemy. 
But we can't Absolutely. allow we can't allow our Nigeria enemy, the criminals and the terrorists in Nigeria to keep P2B for us. No. Even though we hate P2B and P2B never supported Biafra, till today does not mean that a madman should be outcasted. There is a saying in Igbo language that goes like this. Igbo nyara, imano one. Mm -hmm. And when, mm -hmm. and when P2B is being attacked, don't misconstrue it. It's not P2B that they're attacking. They're attacking Biafra people. Because even as P2B did not believe in Biafra, they will never believe that P2B don't believe in Biafra. So when they are saying P2B, P2B, they're attacking you. They're attacking those who have nothing to do with P2B and they are just Biafra. Take example of what happened during the election. We warned them about this election in Lagos. They were talking P2B. Did they attack P2B house? I'm asking you. No. Did you know that P2B have business in Nigeria, in Lagos? Did they attack their, his business? No. Okay. Do you know that P2B have many, many, uh, um, uh, is a shareholder in many, many banks? Did they attack any bank that P2B have uh, share? Share? Did you see, did you hear that? Did you, just I, tell me. Did you see anywhere they attack? You know P2B import um, these uh, beverages in Lagos, in Mandela's, or is it Mandela's or you know one of those places? He has his container is coming every time in Lagos. Did you hear that P2B's business was attacked? Absolutely not. So what are you talking? But yet. It was P2B, P2B. They're using the name and attack Biafra. So what we are trying to let them know is that we understand their antics. So any attack on P2B is attack on Biafra. You can't separate this, no matter how bad it sounds. So it is time. We let them understand that we know what they are doing. And so we want to let it be, make them very clear that this particular protest that Nigerians, gullible Nigerians are organizing, if any Biafra is killed, we will hunt them. Those who engineer that killing will be hunted. I am telling you the fact. Like I said, we are going to weaponize every protester who cares to carry arms to defend themselves if that happens. So when you see them shouting P2B, P2B, my brother, it is not P2B. P2B is one of them. We hate P2B, but we can never allow them to keep P2B for us. When we go inside our house, we will handle P2B the way we want. But for now, we can never allow Nigeria to keep P2B. They want to use P2B to mock us. They want to use P2B to show us how superior they are. They can kill a Biafran and nobody will talk about it. We can never allow them to keep P2B. And any day, P2B is arrested. Believe me. If they try and arrest P2B after this protest, Biafra will take it up from there. Because that arrest is not about P2B, it's about Biafra. Because they believe that P2B is a Biafra, even when he has denounced and denied everything about Biafra. They continue to believe that P2B. That's why when they start killing people in the north, they don't know who believe in Biafra, who don't believe in Biafra. That's why when they come to southeast in Biafra land, they start burning houses. They don't ask who is a Biafra, who is not a Biafra. Even those who still are still hiding and have not come publicly to believe in what we're doing, they burn their house. And after that, they will come fully to support Biafra. That is what is going on. So when they see you, they don't say whether you are Biafra. They know that inside you, you are Biafra. It's our blood, you are Biafra. And if Biafra comes today, become an independent state, you think P2B is going to be accosted? You think P2B is going to say, okay, I can never be part of them. I don't want to. No. It is because some of them are in a very tight corner. They have soiled their hands in blood. They have killed in order to maintain one Nigeria. And today, they are in a very tight corner. They don't know what to do. But just watch out and see. Once Biafra has been declared and restored, it does not matter how long it takes us to restore Biafra. All of them will begin to beg for forgiveness. And we are going to treat them the way we know that the Biafra law is allowed, will be allowed to, them to treat. So Biafra law will take its course, not us. Thank you. I'm highly delighted. Thank you. Thank you, Ben Chus. And um, I was calling on you then, maybe you are, you're not hearing me. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, David. Uh, thank you so much. 
Thank you so much, uh, sir. Thank you so much, our Deputy Minister of Information and our ADC, to our Prime Minister. I thank you so much, our Minister, Prime Minister of Biafra, Mazi Simon Egba Njoko. Thank you for coming. So I have like four, four questions, but let me take it out from one after the other. One question I want to ask you, sir, just in your opening statement, we have had a series of sit at homes, even on Fridays, but in your opening statement, you said that this sit at home will be so exceptional. I mean, the four day sit at home that is upcoming. A lot of Biafras just joined on this space, and I want to ask you, sir, what is the exceptionality of this particular sit at home that you have been stressing? I even stressed on your opening submission for Biafran to understand why they must sit at home on 29th. 30th, 31st, and 2nd of August. Why? It is because, one, we are demanding the release of Mazen Namdekano. It is not enough that they allow doctors to go there and see him. He's not to be treated in DSS dungeon. That is number one. Number two is that we want to also use this seat at home to show the, delig the delegitimization of Nigeria within Biafra territory. Also, to show to the world and help Biafra is prepared that for over 45 million votes that were recorded today in the second phase of the Biafra self-referendum, it shows that this particular seat at home, the awareness is something else. Third, because we have a very good intel that some of the governors has planned to mass murder the workers and blame it on myself. So we are calling on these people. It has happened before. It has, it has happened in Enugu today. Where are them? Those people that uh, were killed in Enugu, what happened to them? Nothing. Nigeria government killed them and wanted to use it to blackmail me, thinking that uh, with that, I'm going to run away from social media. Oh, uh, sit at home, you order, and they kill people. We continue to warn them. So now we have a very, uh, you know, you know, a very good intel that they plan to mass murder people, you know, in Imo State Secretariat, in Enugu State Secretariat, and in Aba, in Abia State Secretariat, and they have planned that the people will be planned that the people will be moved uh, in the government buses, and then they will come there and shoot them. And then they will say, oh, it is Simon Ekwa enforcing it. So in order not to be used as a propaganda mechanism by the Nigeria terrorist state, stay at home. That's why it is going to be very exceptional. And then also, remember, as we continue to show that Biafra land will be completely, we will completely eradicate anything Islamic terrorism. Friday, sit at home, become very imperative. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My second question is this, sir. Before 2019, prior to you joining the liberation of Biafra from Nigeria, I want to ask you, sir, have you met Mazen Nandekano one-on-one? Never. Thank you, sir. You said... You were not part of the formation of the then Eastern Security Network, which was launched in 2020 by our leader, Mazin Nandekano. How come you know the intricacies of the formation of Eastern Security Network? And when Mazin Nandekano was kidnapped, you commanded men. That's the second question. What you don't know is bigger than you. Wow. What I don't know is actually bigger than me. Thank you so much for that short response.